Hello, Phil here at Digital DJ Tips in the lab and we are looking at why you might just want to replace your controller with one of these. Two deck control, just like the Tractor Control S2. And what's more, because the new Tractor Control X1, well it's not that new anymore, but because it's, it's the latest Tractor Control X1, has got this touch strip it's a progressive control just like those jog wheels. Using this properly lets you do on this unit pretty much everything you can do on the Control S2, but it's this big. Now, a couple of caveats here. Let's talk about when you would want to do this first. The whole point of this tutorial and the whole point of showing you and highlighting these things is to help you to DJ in real DJ booths, to help you to DJ when you're out. Because in a lot of DJ booths, two things, firstly, Turning up with one of these is frowned on. Now that's completely wrong. It shouldn't be frowned on, but it is. Secondly, there ain't room. A lot of DJ booths just haven't got room to take controllers and plug them in. But I guess there's a third reason as well. DJ booths have got perfectly good mixes in. Now this is two decks and a mixer. Now a DJ booth has got a mixer in it. So this thing here is two decks. Down the middle, there's a line. Left hand controls one, right hand controls another. And there's a mixer in the DJ booth anyway, so you don't need the center section. So actually, if you know what you're doing, one of these and an existing DJ mixer in any DJ booth is all you need to DJ digitally. Obviously you need to take your laptop as well, but there's one more thing you need, which is a sound card. This is a sound card, it gives you two audio outputs. And in this case, you'll be plugging this into your computer using a USB two USBs into the computer, one for the X1 and one for the sound card. And then you'll have two leads like this, coming from this, plugging into two spare channels on the mixer. So then the mixer's treating your two audio inputs from this, the two outputs from here, treating them just like it treats any CDJ, any vinyl, set up, it's just treating them as inputs and you can use gain, bass, mid, treble, all the normal controls, crossfader and so on, on their mixer, set tractor to external mode and you're off, you're in the DJ booth and this is your full controller. So what I wanna do now is show you some of the ways that this has kind of come of age and they're all based around the touch strip. So let's dive in and have a look. Now when I say the Tractor Control X1 is divided down the middle, I really mean it. Even the touch strip is divided down the middle. So this area here controls one deck and this area here controls another deck. So let's go, let's get this track here uh, somewhere where we might want to mix it using just the touch strip. So the track's loaded and in order to very, very quickly scrub through the track, you hold the shift button down and then using the touch strip that aligns to the deck you want, move to the part you want. So obviously we're probably gonna to wanna to go to the very beginning. Once we're there, we can then use it to move more accurately, just like you would a nudge on a DJ controller, and then hit our Q button. So we're now lined up and ready to play from there. Now we're playing, we might want to nudge the track if we're manually beat matching to keep it in time with the one that's playing on the other deck. And the way you do that, the way you nudge clockwise, in other words, to speed it up, by moving the touch strip to the right. And the way you nudge anti-clockwise to slow it down is like this. Now, of course, when you're manual beat matching, you don't want to just correct the beat. If this one's a little bit slow, you want to speed it up as well. And it's really simple to do that. You just hold the sync button and turn the loop encoder. That's what this big knob here is. That'll speed it up and slow it down until you get to the tempo that you want. Okay, so that's how to nudge and search and scrub using the touch strip. Let's look at what would happen if you wanted to control the whole of one track with the touch strip. Now, switching that on is really easy. You put your hand in the middle here and throw towards the one you don't want. We don't want that one. So now the whole touch strip is controlling one track. My nudge, we'll slow down one track or speed up one track. One bit I like is the throwing the track um, as if you were doing a spin back. Because you've got longer to throw it, you get an, a much better effect when you set the touch strip like that. And to put it back to normal, you put your finger where the, the dot is on the, on the deck you turned off, if you like, and just move that to the middle and let go. 
Now we're back to having two decks being controlled. Really simple to do. So I want to show you next how to use loop rolls on the touch strip. This is a really cool effect, especially if you turn flux mode on. Now I haven't got time to go into flux mode, but basically it lets the track play on underneath depending on nothing. You know, you could be messing around with cues and loops and so on. As soon as you stop, the track will return to where it was. And you'll hear when we're messing around with loops here, how powerful that can be. So again, we're gonna use a little button in the middle to set, set our effect up or set our loop up and press the loop encoder. Now we have flashing lights up here and a set of blue lights, 11 blue LEDs here, which are telling us we're in this mode. All I need to do is touch the touch strip now and I will get instant looping that I can make Faster, slower, like this. And it's all on one finger. And the flux mode is allowing the tune to carry on playing underneath no matter what I'm doing. Really, really cool. So let's turn that off by pressing that button there and that one again. And we're back to normal. And now I'm gonna show you a similar thing using effects. So the effect slots are set to three individual effects and on effect three I have a gator. Now this is the wet dry, in other words the effect on off. So now the effect is gating, turning the tune on and off very very quickly basically and I've chosen this one because it's very easy to see what it's doing. By holding down the shift button and by pressing the effect that's switched on, sorry by holding down the, uh, the button in the middle of the touch strip and pressing the effect that's on, I now take over what this control would do, the parameter, using the touch strip. Now this isn't for everyone, of course. You might be quite happy DJing in your DJ controller. You might have local gigs where they don't mind you turning up with your DJ controller. You might love using what you're used to. You know, this is all good stuff. But there are a lot of DJs for whom the idea of having something small, easy, unobtrusive, and that lets them use the existing club gear for their mixing is really appealing. And if that's you, I hope you've got some ideas now about how something as, uh, as cool as the X1, the Controller X1, which is the first modular controller that has the touch strip on it, could be the solution for you. So thanks for watching. Uh, you can leave comments on this either beneath, beneath the YouTube video or over on the original article on the Digital DJ Tips website. And of course, if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe using the link below.